Oh my god, this thing doesn't even have a screen on it. Ew. This one has a screen on it, and you can very easily dial everything in using only one knob. And this one has a built-in tuna, not a tuma. And you can easily see it on the screen, and you don't have to use an app. This one only has two foot switches. What am I supposed to do? This one has twice as many foot switches. It has four. So you can easily switch between four different presets with this unit. And two of the foot switches have multiple functions, such as tuna and banking up and down. This one doesn't have an overdrive pedal in the chain, bro. What am I supposed to do when I want to do some sweet chugs? I'm screwed! With this one here, not only can you capture all of your favorite overdrive pedals, but you can put them in the signal chain so you can terminate all your notes with your favorite boost pedal. This one doesn't have an effects loop. How am I supposed to add some of my favorite pedals to it? This one has an effects loop, so you can add all your favorite pedals. So get to the chopper and get some pedals and put them in the effects loop now! This is my cat. I don't know why he's in the shoot, but he's here. This one doesn't have any of the amp models. It only has captures. Ew. So ew. This one only has captures as well. But with this unit, you can set the intensity of how accurate you want your captures to be. So you can have the most accurate captures in the world. And besides, modeling is the way of the past. Capturing and profiling is the way of the future. Trust me, I've been there. And I came all the way back here just to tell you that. Yeah, but how does it sound, bro? Any questions? Ever since the release of the new Neural Nano Cortex, uh, there's just been all kinds of buzz and all kinds of positive and negative things being said about it. And there's a lot of differing opinions about it. You know, I mean, there's a lot of people complaining about a lot of the things that I had in the intro here. I mean, it doesn't have a screen. There's not enough switches. Um, you can't put a uh, overdrive pedal in the, uh, in the chain there. And you also don't have an effects loop. But... There's a lot of people who say it's awesome, like it sounds amazing, it does capturing very well, which we all know, I mean that's pretty much a given at this point, it does capturing very well. It has some decent effects in it and it also has an awesome app and it's very easy to use, hooks up via Bluetooth, which everybody said is pretty much seamless and uh, trouble free, so that's nice. And the effects it does have are good and of course, you know, the captures are amazing as well, so I mean there's a lot of pluses with it as well uh, on top of the fact that it's small it's very affordable and you can have the the tech at least the the good parts of the tech and some people are expressing their disappointment because it doesn't have the plugins and it also doesn't have the amp modeling that the original quad cortex came with here's the thing uh, i honestly don't care about that uh, I think that it's fine that it doesn't have modeling and it's fine that it doesn't have the plugins. I mean, I do captures here and they come out amazing. I'm a thousand percent satisfied with the captures. So for all of you guys who are disappointed with what the uh, Nano has to offer, I have a really good solution here for you and it's affordable and I think this would fit the bill for a lot of you and it's the Dimehead Nam Player. Now I got this thing a while back and I'm really impressed with it. I mean, it has a screen and what's cool is, uh, like I said in the intro, or like Arnold said in the intro, it has a tuner that you can see on the screen. And it also has a live mode on it so you can actually see the name of your presets, your four presets from you know where you're standing on the stage. Uh, so it's it, there's some really good features with it and it allows you to have a capture of your overdrive pedal in the signal chain. You get chorus, you get reverb, you get delay, and they're going to be adding more effects. And uh, I heard that they're also going to separate the chorus from the delay so that you can have 
both at the same time. So I really hope that happens sometime soon. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that, but I said it anyways. And the, the amp capturing tech is amazing. Uh, it's, it's, it definitely takes a little longer. It's a little more involved than the quad cortex. But the nice thing is when you do capture your amps, uh, you can uh, adjust how many epochs you have, uh, you know, as, as far as the rendering goes. So you can get them, you know, very accurate. So you can do up to a thousand or, you know, whatever, how many epochs you want. It takes longer, but it actually gets more accurate as uh, you, you, uh, you know, pick higher epochs. Epochs are basically, I'll just put it in layman's terms because I'm a layman. It's just how, you know, how, how many layers of uh, accuracy you want in your capture, I guess. So your average is around 500, but, you know, if you're doing like an amp capture and you want even a little more accuracy, you can do 700. And it even gives you like a, a description of how accurate it was and you can even pull up a graph and it'll show you the amp that you captured and the uh, the capture and how they compare uh, as far as uh, the graph is concerned. So there's a lot of cool stuff in this unit, a lot of nerd tech, you know, if you're a nerdy guy, um, it'll do all that. But the, the thing is though, is this thing, like I said, it, it really does uh, fit the bill for a lot of people who are complaining about the Nano. Now, a little disclaimer here, I'm not telling you not to buy the Nano Cortex, okay? This is for people who are disappointed with what the Nano has to offer compared to what they would hope that it would have done. And if the Dimehead player fits that bill for you, I'm just offering you a solution. I'm sure the Nano sounds amazing, and for the people who bought it for the features that it has that fits their needs, I'm sure they're going to be 100% happy with it. The thing is, it's not all of us are going to be happy with everything. You know, that's why there's so many different products out there, because there's so many different people and use cases that everyone has, so they have to make products uh, that fit all those different use cases. And when you're considering something that is more budget-oriented, there's going to be things that just you know, have to go to fit that product in that price point. And it's just the way it is. For some of us, those things that they left out are deal breakers and for others that they're not, we don't care. So it just depends. So again, I'm not trying to steer anybody away from the Nano Cortex. This is for people who are expressing their concerns about what the Nano Cortex does not have. And maybe this unit here will help you out with that and fit the bill for you. Now, as far as I'm concerned, the way things stand right now, I prefer the Dimehead player because it has the screen, because it has uh, four foot switches, because it has a built-in tuner that I can see on the screen. I don't have to use my app for it. And one of the biggest things is because it allows me to have one of my captured overdrive pedals in the signal chain before my amp. And it has all the effects that I need for now. I mean, I'd like to have some more, but for now I can get by very easily with it. And like I mentioned before, it does have an effects loop. So I have that flexibility if I need it down the road. Now I'm sure both of them sound amazing and the captures come out really good on both of them. I'm not knocking the Nano you know, in any way uh, on, a, on a sonic level. I'm sure it sounds amazing. I have a quad cortex. It sounds awesome. The captures are amazing. But again, it just depends on what your use case is. And for me, if I was to go on stage right now and I had to choose between the two, based on the features and the options, uh, I'd have to go with the dime head because I need my overdrive pedal. And if I switch to a clean channel, I don't want to have to uh, tap dance like I would on the Nano if I hooked the overdrive pedal in front of the unit. I'd have to literally switch to my clean patch and then turn my overdrive off. And then when I go back to my high gain patch, I'd have to tap that switch to go to the high gain patch and turn my pedal back on. So I just don't want to tap dance. And that's not something I want to do, especially when I'm dealing with the digital uh, platform because they're supposed to make life easier for us. That's one of the things that they do. Now here's something to think about as well. I'm sure Neural is going to be doing updates with the Nano and I'm sure they've seen people's complaints and concerns and they're not stupid. They're a good company. So I'm sure they're going to be like, all right, let's figure out a way to put the overdrive slot in there. And maybe with the app, we can switch between um, you know, the transpose to an overdrive and uh, we could do that in an update. So I'm hoping that's the case. If it's not, man, I don't know. That's, that's, a, that's a big swing and a miss as far as I'm concerned regarding that feature. All right, so last night I did a capture of my Splawn Nitro 
and I paired it with one of my IRs that I made in my new IR pack. It's the Mesa 212 uh, with vintage 30s, and the mics in that IR are the uh, Royer 121 and the Shure SM57 paired together, and it just sounds absolutely incredible. There's this big, thick, beefy, aggressive tone to it, and it captured it perfectly, and we did 700 epochs, I think, on it, and uh, it's just super accurate. I, I Put it on a thumb drive, inserted it into the, the dime player, and it sounds freaking awesome. And I have three different presets that I created. And I have a dry crunch, which has the noise gate and the uh, overdrive on it. And by the way, this unit does have a built-in noise gate that doesn't take up a block or anything. It's just kind of in the chain automatically. So that's cool as well. And like I said, I think Nero should have put that in that kind of thing. Like put the noise gate kind of like on the input so it doesn't take up a, a block. That frees up a block for something else. I don't know, just thinking out loud here, I think that would be a great way to work around that whole issue with not having an overdrive in the chain as well. But the noise gate and the input, you can adjust it with the app and then use a block for an overdrive. I don't know, just whatever. Anyways, so it has uh, the noise gate and the overdrive in the first preset. The second preset, I have the noise gate and the uh, overdrive and a little bit of delay. And then for the... Uh, Third preset is my lead preset. I have uh, less noise gate so that the notes will, you know, last longer and not die out so quick. And uh, I have uh, more delay on that, different delay settings. So really, really handy. So let's hear what this sounds like with some riffs and all three of these presets in the full mix. <laughs>
Well, there you go. I think it sounded amazing. The effects are good. And uh, I just like all the features of this unit. And once again, I'm not trying to tell anybody to not buy the Nano. If that thing has the features that you're looking for and you, you like what they did with it, then go buy it. But for those of you who are a little disappointed with what the Nano has to offer, this is a really good solution for you, and the price is pretty comparable. So depending on what you're looking for regarding a more affordable and more compact digital platform, either one of these would be a great fit for you. Just choose the one that has the features that you're looking for. I mean, we all have our deal breakers, right? And the overdrive pedal thing is a bit of a deal breaker for me. I could make it work with the Nano, but I'd rather not have to do any tap dancing. So whether that's a deal breaker for you or there's other deal breakers, like I said, this might be a really good choice for you. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you guys got something out of this video and I hope I helped steer you in the right direction either way. And uh, I will be making more captures for the uh, Dimehead and for Nam in particular. So I'll be uploading those to my website uh, within probably the next few weeks. So keep an eye on the channel for that and i'm really pleased with the captures i've been doing with it so far this thing just absolutely nails them and i love the fact that i can do uh the accuracy level or how many epochs i want to do i don't know if that makes sense to a lot of you guys what the freaking hell is an epoch i don't know what it is but all i know is I can choose how accurate I want my captures to be. Yes, there's a, a point of diminished returns if you could choose too many, but at least I can choose as much as I want and get them super accurate for you guys. So anyways, I hope you guys got something out of this video. And based on what you saw here, what do you think the best choice is between these two units based on what you're looking for? Well, I'm out of here. I got to go finish smoking some ribs for tonight's dinner. So I will see you guys in tonight's live stream. We go live at seven o'clock and I'll see you all then.